All right, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel and again, happy launch week. We are still right in this wave, everybody. iPhone SE launch week. Oh my goodness, I love it. It's just great. Okay, so today I want to talk a little bit about one of my favorite devices that Apple makes and that is the MacBook Pro. Okay, the MacBook Pro has long been one of my coveted devices. And <laughs> when I was growing up through high school, through middle school, I've always wanted a computer and partly because I'm a writer and also partly because I kind of always saw that as the standard of utility. It's the ultimate tool to get things done. And so when I was younger, the computer that I wanted was a compact. They made a silver compact. We still have it downstairs. In fact, I'll be right back actually. Okay. I'm going to go, I'm going to go get it. One second. All right. I'm back. Okay. I got two computers actually. So first of all, this is the computer that I grew up just like lusting after because this was my dad's computer and I thought you know what when I make it big when I become rich and famous this is the computer that I'm gonna buy compact as you see here and look at the interior I love it just beautiful the great keys I wish that you could feel it because they have such like great travel to them they click perfectly so this was the computer that I always thought wow I'm gonna save up and I'm gonna buy this add an Excel spreadsheet built up of how I'm going to save up and buy this computer with the profits from my first book that I sold. Well, high school came around and turns out I didn't have enough money to buy this computer. The computer that I did have enough money to buy and that I loved was this one. It's a Chromebook actually, which might surprise you, but it was awesome. A couple years after I bought this computer, which was on sale for about $200 on Amazon, the thing that I loved about this um, was again the white keys super just classy look silver really nice computer this was my computer like I said through high school that I used to write a lot of things but the thing is that by this point we actually had an iMac in our family kitchen and so a couple years after I bought that computer for Christmas um, I was given Photoshop and Premiere the whole Adobe Creative Suite bundle and that's when I really started getting into video editing and photo editing, I, things that I had done before, but with this new tool set, I could really expand those efforts. So I used the Chromebook to kind of do easy, like lightweight tasks, like writing homework and stuff like that. And writing my book was all on Google Docs. Um, but some of the more heavy, some might say pro uh, focused work was on the iMac in our family kitchen. Fast forward to today and I have the brand new 16 inch MacBook Pro and I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about it, who this computer's built for, who it's not necessarily built for and whether or not you should buy this computer. So let's jump right in. First of all, like I said earlier, I had the HP Chromebook. This computer did everything that I needed it to do at the time, minus what the iMac did. And so if I wasn't into those things that I was only doing on the iMac, this computer was a fantastic computer to do everything I needed to do, which was homework, lots of writing, and honestly, web browsing. Um, things on YouTube, watching lots of YouTube videos, um, and then writing a lot. This computer was absolutely fantastic, and if that's all you want to do, yeah, I'd recommend a Chromebook. It's a lot cheaper than any computer that Apple sells right now, except the other thing that I'd recommend, if you have a little bit more money, and you want a premium product, I would get the MacBook Air. The MacBook Air now starts at $899, which is a pretty incredible price point. Um, especially what you're gonna get out of the MacBook Air and not out of the HP Chromebook is you're gonna get the premium edge that Apple offers you, so the materials and the build is gonna be a whole lot better. You're gonna get things like Touch ID, you're gonna get the awesome keyboard. The new MacBook Airs have the magic keyboard in them, which is fantastic. You're going to get the awesome, beautiful, huge trackpad, super nice screen. The screen is probably one of the largest differences you're going to notice between the HP Chromebook and the MacBook Air is the retina display. And so, and also of course the build quality, which is the aluminum build versus the plastic build. Okay. So that's the MacBook Air. And if you, if that's you, if that's your type of what you, what work you need to do, get the MacBook Air. Now we're going to move on to the MacBook Pro and talk about the 13 inch versus the 16 inch. When you start getting into these pro um, activities, and I'm gonna define those things in this video as things that you do with photo editing, it basically any graphics editing, so photo editing, video editing, obviously animation. When you're starting to want to get features like the touch bar, for example, 
and you're gonna want to start doing video editing seriously um, perhaps 4k footage um, and you want to kind of move more quickly at that point then you want to consider the MacBook Pro I know that you can edit 4k on the MacBook Air but the difference between the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro when you're editing 4K video in Final Cut Pro 10 is going to be speed and consistency over the footage. The MacBook Air is going to need to start rendering stuff before you can even really work with the footage. Now, before I had the 16-inch MacBook Pro, uh, which just came out in October, I got it in January, I had, kind of as a waiting device, I had the 13-inch 2019 MacBook Pro 13-inch. <laughs> Um, that computer was fantastic. I had the base configuration because I bought it in August of 2019 and I said, okay, I'm just going to use this until the new computer comes out, which I thought was going to be in June of 2020. The main difference that I've noticed between the 13 inch MacBook Pro, which I have baseline specs on and the 16 inch MacBook Pro, which I have upgraded specs to a custom configuration on is speed while video editing. Everything else, the system's going to work well, and in some things, I honestly kind of miss my 13-inch MacBook Pro. But when you're video editing, you're going to notice a huge difference between the 13 and the 16-inch MacBook Pro. Now, when I had the 13-inch MacBook Pro, I was editing 4K videos. Like I said, I only had that computer for about four to five months. I was editing 4K videos, no problem. The problem started getting into when you wanted speed and turnaround, then it was starting to get frustrating. Lots of times I didn't have any problem waiting. I said, okay, hey, this needs to render out. I'll wait for it. With the 16 inch MacBook Pro, I do not have to wait for rendering to happen. When I turn on video stabilization on a clip, on the 13 inch MacBook Pro, I would wait from 10 to 12 seconds for it to kind of process, for it to actually apply the effect. 16 inch MacBook Pro, I've seen videos stabilize I'm talking six to seven second length clips. I've seen it stabilized within two to three seconds and, and it's already rendered, it's all ready to go. So you hit stabilization like this. All right, watch the clip. It's awesome. It is so cool. That's something that I just didn't get on the 13 inch MacBook Pro. That's one of the biggest differences. The other thing that I love about the 16 inch MacBook Pro is the screen. The main difference is in the bezels. The bezels on the 16 inch MacBook Pro are super thin it's awesome should you buy the 16 inch MacBook Pro here's what I'd say if you're a video editor for example and you can afford the price tag that comes with the 16 inch MacBook Pro and it starts around $2,300 there's nothing better there's literally nothing better than having the speed of the 16 inch MacBook Pro so the specific configuration that I got on the 16 inch MacBook Pro was this. I upgraded from the 2.3 gigahertz processor to the 2.4 gigahertz processor. I upgraded from 16 gigabytes standard of RAM to 32 gigabytes of RAM. I upgraded the graphics card from four gigabytes to eight gigabytes. And then I kept the storage at the base one terabyte. One terabyte of storage has been absolutely fantastic on my MacBook Pro 16 inch. Fantastic. I have not run out of space once. The closest I've come is once I've started filming for this YouTube channel. I kept the first few episodes on my computer along with all of their footage and all of the rendering files and I got to about 900 gigs full on my computer. Yesterday I cleaned all of that off and moved some of it onto an external drive, cleaned out some of the cache files. I'm back to like 400 gigabyte usage and I have a ton of footage on there right now. I was transferring more stuff off today. It's fantastic I love it I love having a terabyte of storage if you always film in 4k and you know that you have a lot of footage and perhaps you have larger projects the most projects that I have on there at a time I'll probably have about 30 to 40 minutes worth of 4k footage on my MacBook Pro at any given moment if you have more than that I would recommend upgrading to the 2 terabyte the 4 terabyte or if you really want to go at it you can get the 8 terabytes of storage which is like mind-bogglingly insane but so cool to have that on your MacBook Pro. Maybe you do want to upgrade to the two terabytes. I considered it, I decided not to in the end because I wanted to save the money um, and I wanted to upgrade other things instead. And so I didn't get it and I haven't regretted it once. I, I was worried that I might regret not getting two terabytes and that I only got one terabyte of storage. One terabyte has been more than fantastic. 
And when I need more space, when I'm up, when I'm doing particularly large video projects, for example, in that case, I'll use something like this, which stores one terabyte. It's a USB-C SanDisk external drive, super fast, feels just as fast as my internal uh, storage, and it's awesome and it's super small. And so that's no problem at all when I need an extra terabyte. When I don't, it all fits right onto my MacBook Pro. It's fantastic. Should you get the MacBook Pro 16 inch? If you don't care so much about waiting a few extra seconds for clips to render, if you don't care so much about the storage inside your computer, the 13 inch MacBook Pro, I'm telling you, there are some things that I preferred about the 13 inch MacBook Pro over the 16 inch MacBook Pro. Although I might wait on it because I do think that they're gonna announce a 14 inch MacBook Pro within the next couple of months with the new keyboard and again, making the bezel smaller on that size machine like it is on the 16 inch MacBook Pro. I'm telling you the 13 inch MacBook Pro was awesome and if you don't mind the butterfly keys, which honestly don't tell anyone, I prefer the butterfly keyboard to the magic keyboard. I know, I might be weird. I miss the butterfly keyboard, I really do. Oh, that's one of the things I miss about my 13 inch MacBook Pro is the butterfly keyboard. I don't like the magic keyboard as much. I don't know, I'm sorry, but I miss it. Anyways, then I would consider getting a 13 inch MacBook Pro. It starts at $1,300, it's an awesome deal. And then again, if you're mostly just doing graphics slash photo work, the MacBook Air is, Honestly, one of my favorite computers on the market today. Speaking of the MacBook Air, there it is. I'm gonna turn this off really fast. My background's running off of my computer, but I'm gonna turn it off so I can show you. So this is my most recent computer. This is the fastest and most powerful computer I've ever used. If you're considering it and it fits in your budget and it makes sense to you as a tool that can push you forward farther and get you to the next step, there's nothing better than this. I absolutely recommend it. Also. I would say I think silver is the new space gray in 2020. I think the silver finish on this computer looks so good, so clean. So that's the MacBook Pro 16 inch. I hope that you liked the review. If you did, please like and subscribe down below. You guys, this is a mission to get from zero subscribers. My goal is to get to a thousand subscribers this year. So if you can subscribe, please do so. It would really help me out and make sure to like this video and share it with your friends. Comment below to help with the SEO to get these videos trending. So tell me what you'd like to see, put it down in the comments and let's talk about it. Thank you so much for tuning in. This is The Infinite and we'll see you next time. And again, happy launch week. iPhone SE is out, you guys. What comes next? Oh man, I'm so excited. Oh man, I can't wait. Literally cannot wait. So anyways, guys, have a great weekend. Peace.